author, the co-author of the book Why Israel. Uh, something just hit me now when I was listening to Surya's uh, rendition of the contents of Why Israel and what has motivated that. She speaks of the voices of the masses that emanated from Trafalgar Square and the international solidarity movement that brought an end to apartheid. And I was watching uh, something on television in this past week and I was struck by the statement. The, the individual said, it is not only great power that can hold evil in check. That is not what I have found. I found that it's the small things, everyday deeds of ordinary folk that keep the darkness at bay. And this book, Why Israel, appeals not only to the academics, to the intellectuals, but to the ordinary person. It empowers the ordinary person to take a stand against Zionist oppression, Zionist occupation, and Zionist propaganda. It empowers the individual to join the mass movement for the liberation of Palestine, just as South Africa was liberated through the masses, the churches, the schools, the veterans, the overseas movements that refused to offload goods that came from apartheid South Africa. So this book has a wide reach, and I encourage one and all to go through this and join the struggle for the liberation of Palestine. To our speaker, Dr. Firoz Osman. Dr. Firoz Osman is a medical doctor, studied in Alexandria in Egypt. But Dr. Firoz Osman's talents extend far beyond the medical field. Dr. Osman and the State Bal Jassad have taken myself and a dear friend and colleague of mine, Aisha Jalaluddin Sonia, under their wing, have mentored us and have passed the Media Review Network onto us tremendous shoes to fill a very high bar set. But Dr. Firoz Osman's excellence, his brilliance, and his ability to decrypt the Zionist propaganda was evidenced on SABC, on ETV, SAFM, and continues to fight on a daily basis against Zionist oppression, occupation, and propaganda. So I'd like to call to the podium Dr. Firoz Osman. I'm looking for the Firoz Osman you're talking about. I don't know where it is. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I'm really overwhelmed with so many support from friends, from family, from the struggle icons or those who are present and has been mentioned before, and some who couldn't come. Uh, Ismail Kuwani, Ahmad Katrara, and uh, whose families have been ill. And uh, we are indeed, as Media Review Network, very honored to have you here. And I believe that the suffering uh, the in those who are facing incredible injustices, uh, wherever they may be, in Palestine, in Syria, in Egypt, uh, they will be indeed inspired, they will be very heartened by the fact that those who have struggled to free us from the shackles of apartheid in South Africa are indeed remembering, as was said earlier, Madiba's words, that we in South Africa will not be free until and unless those under the yoke of apartheid, of colonialism and racism will be free. And inshallah, we will send that message to them. Our primary motivation for this book, Why Israel, The Anatomy of Zionist Apartheid, a South African perspective has been to share our own experience in facing a very powerful Zionist lobby. Some say that it is the second most powerful lobby after IPAC based in the United States of America. And it has placed the MRN at the cutting edge of a robust battle of ideas for the last 20 years. They have projected an Israeli narrative and not only in South Africa, but the world over, that demonized, that criminalized, and indeed sought to marginalize the Palestinian struggle, the Arabs and Palestinians, as were the indigenous Africans of our country. They were characterized as backward, as uncultured, 
as barbaric, as extremist, that they were prone to violence and terrorism. Of course, Israel, on the other hand, was projected as this weak, vulnerable, um, uh, democratic state that espouses the values of the Western people that have been implanted into the heart of the Arab world that has caused so much difficulties, not only for the regional people, for the world at large. They project themselves as if they are in the front line of defending some of these values in a very hostile environment. And this is a false perception. And we know that. And this is what we at MRN have done. That we wish to challenge this description of Israel exposing it as an entity that was created from the rib of terrorism and it was, as I mentioned, implanted and we know the nature of cancer. It is to distort, it is to disrupt, it is to cause pain and it is to cause suffering and that is Zionism. They have murdered and massacred women and children. They have de demolished and destroyed homes and property, they have raped and they have raised farms and olive groves and we have seen pictures and the picture of the book of a woman clinging onto her olive tree with the Zionist army around her. They have pillaged and plundered the natural resources, resources of, this, of, 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 of Palestine and was, they have ethnically cleansed and exiled the indigenous inhabitants all under the pretext of a fraudulent and mythical right to a land where people have been living there for thousands of years. This is not a small state that is seeking peace and security. This is a very powerful militarized regime. The fourth strongest army in the world. It has over 200 nuclear bombs. It is the leading manufacturer after the United States of America and will overtake it of the drones. It is exporting weapons that has been tried and tested on the Palestinians and distributed to tyrants and despots, particularly the right-wing militia and yes, sad to say, even the Gulf Arab sheikhdoms. And yet, for anybody that dares dispute this particular Israeli version, their narrative uh, that has been churned out by the lobby groups and routinely, I may say, published by the Western media, of the vicious atrocities that have been committed by the Zionists will be condemned as anti-Semitic and worse. We know what apartheid does. We've been through it. It robs one of honor and dignity. It debases, it humiliates, and as Zakir mentioned, it dehumanizes a person. It actually does that so that it can act and kill people with impunity. And it will not evoke a sense of sympathy or compassion for those that have been killed because they have been regarded as simply insects. The blood of the Palestinian martyrs and the tears of the children will always remain an eloquent, if tragic, testimony to the utter hypocrisy of the world we live today, a world that they wish to proclaim and that proclaims human rights and democracy and peace and justice, but we know it's not happening there. Well, the immense courage of many of you present here today, the icons, I, I may just mention Dr. Rashid Jassad, Dr. Dr. Rashid Saruji, Isub Jassad, Ismail Kuwari, who couldn't be here, to Aziz and Isub Pahad, and, and of course, Ronnie Kessels, and Abdul Hay Jassad. I think, uh, you know, your presence here must send a message to those and encourage and will inspire those that are struggling that, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. 
and that, as we describe in the book, there is a momentum building, a momentum where we are, through a process known as lawfare, criminalizing those criminals that, that they are not allowed to strut about our land freely, that they are committing crimes of humanity and they will be punished for it. Israel remains as the last outpost of apartheid in the world. And there comes a time when everybody must cry for, for justice, for those whose tears cannot be seen and whose voices are not heard. It is our fervent hope that this book, uh, Why Israel, will challenge the Zionist rhetoric and create a space for truth, that has thus far been drowned out in the Zionist rhetoric. I thank you for all to come here and show your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Firoz Osman. I now briefly call upon Aisha Jalaluddin Soni to do a book handover. presenting 50 books to the Assistant Director of Libraries, Mr. Shabir Gabus, who will distribute to every municipality library. We also encourage everyone here to try and sponsor at least one book so that we can get it distributed and reach as wide an audience as we can. And symbolically, we'll be handing over one book to Mr. Shabir to keep in the library here at the Apartheid Museum. of thanks. There are lots of people that need to be thanked, first of all, to the Almighty with our turn, nothing is possible. We'd like to thank the authors, Dr. Feroz Osman and Tereya Dadu, for dedicating so much of their time and resources out of their busy lives to make this research, um, to meticulously research and write why Israel. May the Almighty reward you and your families for your efforts. Um, to Mr. Iqbal Jasset, the chairman of Media Review Network, without your invaluable guidance and support, we would not be led onto the right path in any endeavor. As well as thank you for the preface for the book, former Minister Ronnie Castrols, who wrote the foreword to the book, as well as your unwavering commitment to freedom for the oppressed. To all those endorsing my Israel, many of whom are here today, I think there have been mentioned Dr. Esau Bahad, Dr. Aziz Bahad, Dr. Rashid Saluji, Dr. Esau Jassid, and Dohe Jassid, as well as those who couldn't be present today, Ahmed Kathrada, Archbishop Emeritus Dems Mantutu, um, Swellen Zima Advavi, John Dugard, and Terry Brown, Crawford Brown. To our publishers for Porcupine Press. And finally, thank you to all of you for coming here without your intense support and confidence in MRN and for supporting and pre ordering Why Israel, for which there was necessitated the printing of more than 2,000 books. So thank you for that. Thank you very much, Aisha. I think uh, Aisha and Surya are definitely the roses amongst the thorns sitting here on the stage. Um, now we move on to the interactive part 